been doing this uh, real thorough um, workout on this uh, Vevor wheel um, because we had some comments that, um, you know, were fair that, you know, it won't last and things like that. Uh, it's made, you know, it'll fall apart. It's you know made cheaply and all that kind of stuff. Well, it is a cheap wheel. It's very inexpensive to buy. Uh, so I don't expect it will last as long as my Brent behind me here, which is now 33 years old, or at least. Um, and I'm throwing, uh, I'm doing some trimming here on a little Shimpo wheel that I've had for probably seven or eight years. And of course, if you're doing a review, you can't really you know speculate on how long it will last you just have to assume it will last for a while um but i thought we'd do a, a more thorough testing of it so i threw on it for an entire day um and uh, then i did some more work on it the next day as well uh, and then i gave it away <laughs> so i gave it to my older sister melissa wenzel uh, who's got it in her studio now And she's throwing uh, on it as well. And you'll see some um, comments by her at the end of this video. Uh, and then the other wheel I gave away to the radio auction. And that one, I don't know. The guy's got it down away from here and I haven't heard from him. Um, but he's had it for six months now and I haven't heard any complaints. Um, and then the uh, little wheel that I reviewed very last time was uh, the most inexpensive one that I've, I've reviewed from them. And that is with a family just down the road from me. So I am hearing from them and they love it. You know, they're, it's, they've got two kids, 12 and 10, and they're playing with it and having a great time. Um, so, so that one is working fine as well. But the one that, um, the original one uh, that Vevel sent me was the more expensive one. And I think it was around three fifty four hundred dollars uh, I think I'll post a link to that one in here. And I asked Vevel to send me their certificate that proves it's uh, basically uh, uh, legal to sell it in North America. So here that is. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's the one Melissa has, my older sister, and she's been throwing on it and loves, seems to love it. Thinks it's a, legs are a bit short, but, but I raised it up anyway, and, and she can raise it even higher if she wants to. Um, so, um, so that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, I just wanted to give you a potter's tip, um, because, um, I lost my chamois leather when I was throwing and I did throw some gritty clay, which I don't do very often, but I made some mugs out of really gritty clay, couldn't find my chamois leather. So I thought, how will I do this? And I thought, well, I'll just do the pebble thing that I do on the bottoms of my mugs and plates to make them really shiny. Uh, I'll do that on the rim of the pieces. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, I have these mugs. I just basically normally trim them as I do. Um, this is a gifting grip, of course. So I don't do much at all, but I do glaze the bottoms of my pieces, so I don't have to smooth the bottoms of my pieces because the glaze makes them really smooth anyway. But I just use a pebble like this. If I really want to make the piece smooth, and I think, well, maybe I won't glaze this one or something, this is what I do. So it doesn't scratch the Chippendale. And then I just turn it over, pop it back in there, so it's very quick. And then I just do this on the rim. I've done about a dozen of these already, I made 24 of them, so. But just hold it back as and forth for a few revolutions. It's as smooth as a baby's bottom. There you go. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to give you that little potter's tip if you couldn't find your chamois leather. Um, just get a pebble off the beach or somewhere and you, maybe you don't live near a beach, but uh, some smooth pebble will do it. All right. I have not weighed the clay, but it's all around about a pound uh, and a bit. Um, so, you know, so whatever a pound is in grams, 440, I think it is. So wet the wheel head when you first start, just a little bit. You don't want it to be totally wet, but just a little. Um, but anyway, let's get going. Throw a little bit. Move that around so I don't get my knee wet. I'm going out to dinner tonight, so I don't want to get dirty. <laughs> I'm in a pottery studio, how can I not get dirty? So about, uh, I would say 450, 460 grams. I may want me to throw a ball. I've got the measurements here, so we'll see whether I get it in this piece of clay.
when you take an order, you have to decide whether it's something that is easy for you to do, or will you have to do some research and development doing it. And this, you know, I just wanted some flowers painting on the outside of the bowl, so that's pretty easy. So this wheel has a little bit of a hum to it, it's not silent. It's about the same noise as a Shimpo uh, light. Now you don't want it to be too tall. So let's see if I pull this over, I'm going to have to move that back a bit. That's my uh, caliper there. So I'm at the height already. So I better measure the width. Oh, much too small. So that's the width I've got to make it. So that'll make it shrink down a bit anyway. Make sure I don't touch the caliper at this point. Once I've got the width, I'm going to set the caliper in that position so that I can get it every time. So let's see what width we have now. Still a bit small. I'm surprised. So I'll have to move my caliper back a bit. I can probably get the rest of it with the uh, metal rib though. So I've got it close. And it's a bit tall. I'd already set the height on the caliper, so. But it may mean I need a bit more clay. I've increased the width, taking into consideration the 14% shrinkage of this clay because it's a very smooth white clay. Oh, that's very close now. So um, I can probably accept that one. Exact point that I have to hit. I don't throw the calipers very often because I like my pieces to vary. And then when you're done, you just rotate that out of the way without moving the base and you know you've got... But I think because... Um, I'm just going to throw these on individual bats. Yeah, I think that's what he wants. So that's hanging out a long way. Got the guts. That's full speed which is very adequate for centering. I don't know what that would work out in revolutions per minute. And then always remember to re sort of compress those platelets in the clay in the center of your pole because when you stretch it open with the pole you're actually making all those platelets align in that direction so I try to compress and I'm not sure whether that makes them get closer together as platelets I think that's what the idea is side for you because I'm putting my arm across the screen. Once you've done one, you start to build up a bit of muscle memory in your hands so you know how to get the next one. But that one to me feels like it's tall. I'm going to widen it. Grab all the water out. 
see what we've got. Oh yeah, I've got just a bit more to go. So that one I was a bit more accurate with the first. So I'm going to push down and out at the middle at the bottom. I'm going to make a bunch of these anyway, so we'll be able to um, get basically get the height and the width every time after you've done a few. They've got a shrink to be about two and a half inches. That's a touch taller than I think I need it. Um, let me measure that. Oh, wait a minute, because I was measuring from the other back. And I'm changing bats now, so that's that makes it problem. I shouldn't be throwing in all the same bats. Anyway, because the bats are actually a different height. What was the first one is what I need to know. But there's the next. I think they're probably very close then. It does seem like it was too tall, but the bat this bat is actually three quarter inch plywood, and the other one was literally a quarter inch. Yeah, so I'm glad I realized about the bat thickness. I'll be throwing all these to that measurement and they'd all be wrong, or some of them will be wrong because of the bat thickness. But now I know when I've got this thick, extra thick bats, I can just assume it's gonna be a little bit higher anyway. The other thing, of course, when I'm trimming, I could always trim a little bit off the height of the wall, too. I'm not sure he wants to be that accurate anyway. So let's see, way too tall again. Okay, um, I'm now gonna throw the rest of the pieces um, just in stop motion so you can see that I did them on this wheel, but um, the uh, uh, system I've got here is a uh, bat system that I made myself. Um, I found these white discs at a uh, recycling store, and I think they've been cut out of kitchen. I've shown these before, but kitchen counter type uh, holes drilled so that um, they could put a sink, uh, like a vessel sink in, and, um, and I've just got these for a dollar a piece. But then I cut a big bat, put a hole in it, and it wasn't quite uh, thick enough, so um, so I made a thin disc, put it in there, and then I put the others on top like that. Now it's just a bit above the other one, so I can throw on it, um, and uh, and it works pretty good. Um, I've been using this for probably 20 years now, so the bats last a long time. But anyway, stop motion from this point on.
but um, I had no problems with this so far. I'm just trying to give you a fair assessment of whether it's worth, you know, paying out 400 and some odd dollars for it. This was the, the most expensive one they've sent me so far. And the other one was 209, I think. This one, I think, was 435. And I think they gave you a discount, uh, 5% anyway, so you get about 20, 20, 25 dollars off. There you go. These are going to be painted on the outside. Okay, that's the set of balls, all thrown using calipers. Took about an hour and a quarter, I guess, to throw all that lot. Um, and um, I'm going to hand paint probably most of them, but I, I only need to paint four of them. So I may just paint eight. I'm not sure yet, but um, but that's a nice grouping of walls. You know, I'm going to try throw mugs tomorrow on this wheel. Okay, I am going to throw. I've just cut up a whole bunch of clay. I'm going to try and throw 15, 16, 17 of these, whatever. This is a four pound ball um, to turn them into hanging platters or serving bowls. I'm not sure which yet. So this is just under four pounds of clay because I actually had a bag of clay cut into six and it was 22 pound bag of clay. There we go. So I've tested this wheel I can throw up to six pounds of clay on it. After that, it seems to struggle a little bit, um, slow down a little bit with the centering anyway. But six pounds of clay is adequate for most small time hobby potters. So my goal is um, to throw about, I don't know, 18 if I can, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, you get the idea. I'm throwing a lot of balls and I'm going to um, turn some into planters and some into regular balls. Uh, and it's basically the test. What's the stamina of this wheel? Uh, and now I'm gonna throw about 16 to 20 coffee mugs, I guess. So altogether today I will have thrown 20 balls uh, about 17, I lost one of the big balls, um, so 17 big balls and about 16 some odd coffee mugs, so putting it through its trials. Okay, so these are very small balls of clay, probably about 300 to 350 grams. Um, I changed my wheel head so that um, I've got more room to lift them off the wheel, since I don't want to take the splash pan away at the back, trying to keep this wheel a bit cleaner. So this is no problem for this wheel because it's so small a piece of clay. The foot pedal is quite sensitive. Oh, 
Oh, and the clay I'm throwing on here is the 455 Speckle from Pottery Supply House now. I started off with the balls doing the uh, uh, 516. I might stamp some stuff on the bottom of these, so I'll leave a, a base that I can actually push those letter stamps in. I've got an order to do some for the local radio station again. It's www.coastalvillages.ca and that's the local radio station. They show everything. Well, not show. <laughs> do shows on everything. Go out the area. If you want to know what the local stuff goes on, I need a sponge on a stick. It's a big sponge on a stick. Oops. It's always scary when it vibrates like that, but it doesn't really do much. You can put it back straight perfectly so just by doing that. Anyway, let's see where we get this one off. I use I'm just so used to throwing with no splash pan on the back. Because it's easy to get them on and off when you have no splash pan there, you just slide them onto your hands. See how sensitive that was, you know, quite easy to control the wheel as it was going around. That's why I like a slow wheel. Uh, this, this one's much better than the, oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah, if you've got a wheel that doesn't have that sensitivity, when you're doing it slow to get, you can spin it right off. But this one seems to have just about the right sensitivity. Okay, um, it is a massive throwing day because it's raining a lot, so nothing's drying out. I've now thrown 16 coffee mugs, 22 small bowls, rice, like cereal rice bowls kind of thing, uh, and 17 large bowls. It's been a big throwing day. Um, so I think I've put this, this is the first Vevo wheel I was given to review and I did that way back last year. Um, and uh, so this is the strongest one. This is one that retailed about 400 and something. Um, and um, I did this video today because I wanted to put it through um, a studio setting. Um, Cause one of the comments um, was saying that these reels wouldn't go through a, a studio use. Um, this is a lot of pieces um, and the wheel's been working fine all day. I fully expect it to um, start up again tomorrow because it. I did some of those bowls, five of them last night, and threw a game today, or well, a lot today, and so it started up. It's um, you know. So what else can I say? It's um, I'm a potter. I'm not an electrician. I'm not an engineer. The wheel's working good, um, and you know. So I I do say if you're a beginning potter, um, I would say you know, age wise. Somebody said that it shouldn't be for kids. Well, you know, I had a 12 year old throwing on a wheel. Um, that was fine. Um, I would say if you're eight years old, you probably ought to you know, have adult supervision close by. Um, and uh, but um, but it's you know, these wheels seem to be working pretty good. And uh, I wish we could, uh, you know, make wheels um you know any more exp inexpensively so everyone can do this because it's great it's a really nice thing to actually learn how to do um so uh so it's a good beginner's wheel you know and then when you've this many pots i could make a couple of thousand dollars at a craft fair with this many pots you know and go out and buy a really big high-end potter's wheel at that point so um but anyway um this is uh you know a lot of pots Okay, this is what I'm doing to those bowls. Um, I'm actually going to turn some of them into planters. 
um, probably about a dozen of them, I guess. And um, so I actually strengthened the part where the wire goes through because um, there are four pieces of wire with each hook and um, to hook them on through there. It gives people a little bit more confidence in it, but, um, but those are the big balls. They're about uh, 11, 12 inches across.